Hi, my name is Michel van Eyten. I'm a researcher in the area of cybersecurity, the security of information and communication technologies. As you will undoubtedly understand, cybersecurity is an increasingly important topic for next generation infrastructures. Earlier in this MOOC, you've learned about the increasing use of ICT in next generation infrastructures and the many opportunities that this offers. This has probably raised questions in your mind. The opportunities sound great, but what about the threats? That's a relevant question. Let us first define the term security. In computer science, security is conventionally defined as the preservation of confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Over the past years, you've probably all seen all kinds of reports on cybersecurity incidents in critical infrastructures. Many of them involved so-called SCADA systems, supervisory control and data acquisition systems. Just a few weeks ago, for example, it was reported that malware, that is malicious software, had been running on the servers of the airport of Brussels Charleroi. Apparently also data was exfiltrated. This is the latest example of a long history of malware incidents in critical infrastructure systems. A famous early example made headlines in 2003 when the slammer worm infected machines in a nuclear power plant in the state of Ohio, in the United States. The worm outbreak brought down the safety monitoring systems in the nuclear plant for nearly five hours. And this is just malware infections. There are many more attack scenarios affecting ICT systems in critical infrastructures. These ICT-related risks are what this part of the MOOC is about. It consists of two short segments. In this segment, we explore the question how big are the risks stemming from ICT dependencies in infrastructures? In the, second in the second segment, we asked a logical follow-up question, namely, how can we deal effectively with those risks? Okay, the first question, how big are the risks? Well, let me first state the obvious. There is no clear answer to this question. No number, no quantity of any kind. You may see some dollar estimates floating around the web that claim to quantify the economic damage of security incidents. They typically talk about billions or sometimes even trillions of dollars, but none of them are based on sound research. The lack of a clear estimate for the size of the risk has two main reasons. First, there is a lack of reliable data. The standard definition of risk is probability times consequence. For many of the risks that infrastructure uh, systems face, we know very little about either of these quantities. We can do some educated guesswork at best. The second reason is that even if we would have this data, we are dealing with a rapidly changing problem. Empirical data on the probability and consequence of a particular attack scenario over the past couple of years is unlikely to be a good indicator for the future. Not only is the technology itself changing, but we are also often dealing with adversaries, not forces of nature. In this sense, security is very different from safety. A safety risk, say a hurricane of a certain magnitude or a metal valve breaking under pressure, can be understood from studying past incidents. Metal valves do not suddenly change their behavior. But human opponents do. Adversaries adapt to new security measures. Sometimes, wholly new adversaries suddenly enter the playing field. A well-known example of the latter is the emergence of attacks by nation-states. You may have heard about an attack called Stuxnet on a factory for uranium enrichment in Natanz, Iran. The evidence suggests that the US and Israel executed this highly advanced act of sabotage using a variety of weaknesses in the ICT of the plant. Of course, strictly speaking, we do not know who was behind this attack. In this field, we rarely know anything for certain about the attackers. So we don't have a robust, quantifiable answer to these questions of how big these risks are. What do we know about them? Well, let's establish some basics. We know incidents occur frequently and across all infrastructures. Of course, in each sector, some equipment is better protected than other. Perhaps one could also state that, on average, some sectors are better protected than other sectors. But there currently is no viable way to estimate such an average, if that were even useful to begin with. We are talking about large-scale technical systems, after all, which contain thousands, if not millions, of heterogeneous elements that are amenable to some form of cyber attack. 
The more empirically grounded take on this is simple. There are documented breaches in all sectors. To better understand the problem, it's useful to distinguish three types of incidents. The first is unintentional incidents. In other words, accidents. Disruptions caused by failures in software or hardware. The second type is intentional targeted attacks, which are incidents where a human attacker purposefully tries to compromise the security of some systems or a set of systems. And the third type is intentional untargeted attacks, where the incident is caused by a human attacker who is not targeting the infrastructure system specifically. The difference between targeted and non-targeted attacks may be a bit puzzling, but it is, a, it, it is an important distinction in the area of cybersecurity, because there are many non-targeted attacks that create a lot of damage. Targeted means the attack specifically focuses on a certain system or organization. Stuxnet, for example, was highly targeted. The attack was designed for just one specific plant in Iran. Unfortunately for the attackers, some of the malicious software that they used spread beyond the target, a bit like a normal virus, you could say. And that is how it ended up in the hands of a security company, who then started investigating it. And when others joined them, it became clear that they had discovered a unique cyber weapon that was never meant to be seen by outsiders. Many attacks are non-targeted. That may sound a bit strange, but what it means is that the attack goes after a large population of victims at once. Large often means millions. For example, some malware is written to find and compromise as many victim machines as possible. The attacker doesn't care who owns the specific machine or in what location it is, it is exactly located. He just wants to compromise thousands of machines, combine them into a network, a so-called botnet, and use them to send out spam or rent them out for other criminals pursuing other attacks. The 2003 incident in the Ohio nuclear power plant, which I mentioned earlier, is an example of a non-targeted attack. It was caused by the slammer worm, a piece of malware that tried to attack all computers that contained a certain vulnerability in Microsoft Windows. The attackers didn't know and probably didn't care that the worm would infect machines in a nuclear power plant and bring down the safety systems of the plant. So even though an attack is not targeted specifically at the systems in a certain infrastructure, it can still wreak havoc there. And there are many such attacks flowing across the internet all the time. Thousands of non-targeted attacks hit the systems of infrastructure operators every day. Untargeted attacks are a routine issue, you could say. In many respects, so are the defenses. Standard security practices deal with most of this stuff. Targeted attacks are the mirror image. They are more rare, but they are also harder to defend against, because attackers can exploit specific weaknesses in the targeted systems or organizations. So crudely put, one could say the risk of a non-targeted attack is high frequency times low consequence, while for the targeted attack, the risk is low frequency times high consequence. There is no clear correlation between the impact and the type of incident, unintentional, targeted intentional, or untargeted intentional incident. For each of the three types, there have been publicly reported major outages. But there is a large contingent of unreported incidents. We have no idea how many. It seems reasonable to assume that most incidents only have limited impact. In fact, that this is part of the reason why they went unreported. In recent years, only a few large-scale outages have been attributed to ICD incidents, and even in those cases, the evidence for this attribution is scant. A well-established case of a major unintentional incident is a large power outage in the northeastern US and Canada, which in the end was traced back to a software bug in the alarm system of a control room of the First Energy Corporation in Ohio. There was no alarm where they should have been one. What would have been a manageable regional power failure cascaded into a blackout on a massive scale. There are corroborated examples in all sectors. Earlier this year, a software bug triggered an outage in the air traffic control systems of the Western US. Outages because of untargeted attacks also have do documented examples. 
the slammer worm in the Ohio nuclear power plant was already mentioned. Another example is a recent malware infection in the US Army control room for drones. Major outages because of targeted attacks are more rare so far. The Stuxnet example, which I mentioned earlier, is one of the few plausible cases that I'm aware of. Another document attack, documented attack is on energy companies, most notably the Saudi oil company Aramco, where 30,000 computers in their office networks were disabled. Another example is the countrywide internet outage in Syria in 2012. According to information released by Edward Snowden, this outage was caused by the NSA, the US National Security Agency. Apparently, NSA staff was trying to install an exploit on the hardware of the country's main internet service provider so that it could intercept and manipulate traffic. During that installation, they inadvertently brought down the routers that connected the country to the rest of the internet. Other corroborated incidents of targeted attacks are much more localized. For example, in 2008, a disgruntled employee of the city of San Francisco locked the officials of the city from its computer networks. In 2000, another disgruntled employee, this time of an Australian firm selling SCADA-controlled sewage equipment, abused this equipment to let 800,000 liters of raw sewage spill out into local parks, rivers, and the grounds of a Hyatt Regency hotel. To sum up, so far, cybersecurity incidents have had an observable but limited impact on infrastructure services. As far as I know, there is no data in any sector that suggests that there is a clear rise in major outages caused by ICT incidents. This undoubtedly speaks, partially, to the efforts of the defenders. Infrastructure operators have acknowledged the need to invest in better security of their ICT, given their increasing reliance on it. You could see it as an arms race between the attackers and the defenders. That being said, the past track record provides little guidance for the future. In fact, it's fair to say that among cybersecurity experts, there is a widespread agreement that there is a huge pool of untapped vulnerabilities that could be used for infrastructure attacks especially in SCADA systems. In other words, it might get a lot worse in the future. Why do security experts think this pool of vulnerabilities is, is there? What are its causes? Who has the motive and skills to exploit these weaknesses? And what can we do about it? Those questions we discuss in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.